Now we're going to call the General Government Committee meeting to order. We got a motion to approve the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Any discussion on the agenda? Not all in favor? Aye. How about our minutes from our May 8th meeting? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any public comments? Not aware of any? No. <coughs> Are there any supervisors not seated as committee members that have any information? This committee. Yes. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Here to speak today just a little bit about my housing resolution that's before you today. Um, and simply at the end of the day, it would just instruct the administrator to put a program together um, to be funded in, 2020, in the 2024 budget in which municipalities could borrow money from the county um, at a 0% interest rate over the, cor over the <clears throat> course of a maximum of 10 years or to be paid back when a, when a residence was built and uh, sold or rented. Um, and so I think uh, pretty basic from the start, just get the program in place and then fund it within the 2024 budget. Um, have reached out to a few towns, the ones that I have spoken to, uh, villages have been, um, on board, I'll say, you know, there's no nothing really out there in concrete for them to look at yet. But um, as as far as the um, the concept, they're they're for it. Um, and at the same time, it it makes the county whole. At the end of the day, um, it it remains an asset to the county financially because it will be paid back um, in time. So, with that, Mr. Chair, if there's any questions. Um, Are you going to be sticking around for the discussion when it's on the agenda, or is it just right now? Uh, just right. I don't believe I could speak during the discussion of the. So it it did it change a lot between because now it says kind of the wording looks like it says hand it over to Vince for review and guidance and like you what you just presented sounded more like here's the plan and here's what will happen with it. But the wording in the resolution sounds a little bit different. This is the one I handed out last month. Uh, um, and it had changed a little bit from that, but this is the, this is the one. And, and realistically, it'll just put the, it'll it put it on the administrator and staff to, to create the program up front um, before the program is funded. So everybody can see what the program is before it's funded. Um, that being, of course, us, the county board, as well as any community <clears throat> looking to borrow money from the county would know exactly what the repayment schedule would look like, what, you know, what, what they needed to do. Um, so just the, everybody knows what they're getting into. I think this is pretty straightforward, and I think it should be. Yep. You know, so that there's no misunderstanding of what's out there and what's available. Totally my, my question is where it says that whole county administrator is directed to explore and make recommendations regarding a fund that could be used for this purpose. Like, do we need a resolution for this or can't Vince just do that? Yeah, I'm 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 struggling here only because I'm using Moe's glasses and they're not strong. <laughs> All right, what line are you looking at, Ryan? Uh, 18, just where, yeah, 18. Okay. Yep, and that's realistically the administrator and, and staff putting the program together so that everybody knows. So the county knows, the municipality knows what they're in for if they come and borrow money for us. I don't want, I don't want anybody saying, oh, I didn't know this is, you know, this is what it was going to be. We want it, we need it to be very plain so both sides know exactly what is expected from each other at the end of the day. I, I think what what sort of transpired was we were trying to create the program originally in the resolution and there were so many things that, you know, if you tried to get down to the specifics, it would be too much of a resolution and we thought, doesn't it make sense? 
understanding the concept that he has to have staff create it so that they have more time to dig into that minutia. And so that this was kind of that compromise resolution yep. to, to yeah. approach okay. it that way. That makes sense. And then what would be, so where it says on 19, it starts saying initially $200,000 for budget year 24. Mm -hmm. Is there, like, do we need any kind of plan in place or anything? Like, cause let's say like that gets snapped up immediately for that budget year. Like, okay, great. We've got proof of concept these three municipalities borrowed and started projects and if the county decides moving forward that like okay this is great like do we have a plan to expand or anything if it if if it works sure I oh go ahead well I, I think if that was to happen i mean the two hundred thousand would be sitting there yep. if let's say hypothetically it's gobbled up in the first three months the county board always has the option and there's more demand the county board always has the the option to to amend the budget and put more money in it um, if you know if, if it proves to be that popular um, I think by setting the resolution at two hundred thousand it gives the the constituents at least a vision as to what the plan is and for budgeting purposes it helps us be able to explain it as well so yep. I think if beyond that I think that works. Yeah, I and, and I don't beyond that, then I think you got to look at the budget constraints and right. everything that goes along with that. So I think the resolution at 200,000 probably makes the most sense. Sending it back to staff to, to drive the program, I think, is probably the best and most prudent way to do it. Yeah, and as Malia said, this way staff can get written the way it needs to be instead of trying to put it on this piece of paper and, and say, here's you know every little detail. It'll come back to some committee at some point anyway when it's done. Makes, makes sense. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thanks. I'm looking for an update on our investment policy. I'm not sure it's worth putting the PowerPoint up uh, for such a short little presentation, but uh, you've got a sheet in front of you that says investment policy. I just wanted to give you an update on where we stand with this. Um, our investment advisors, Prudent Man Advisors, PMA, is reviewing the policy now. Uh, staff has looked at this and we're comfortable with it, but we're, we're getting their eyes on it. And up to 30,000 feet, it's a, it's a framework for managing the $31 million investment portfolio we've got. Um, in almost all of these, having looked across a number of different counties, there's four objectives for these. The first is to preserve the capital, safety, manage the risk. Second is to stay liquid so we can afford to do the things we want to do when we want to do them. The third is to get some sort of return. Our investments are fairly limited, so we're not talking about the kinds of returns that a, a private investor might see. And then we also have uh, interest in diversification, not just in terms of the asset class, but in terms of the, the maturity of the assets so that we can manage our money well and get projects done when we want them to get done. So those are likely to be the four objectives that come out of this policy. Really importantly, uh, there's some roles that are assigned in the policy. And the first is to this particular committee. And that's essentially to provide oversight for the entire process. So at least once a year, this committee will in the future meet to decide if the policy is still the right policy, to sort of get a look at the uh, classes of investments that we can use and make a determination about what those ought to be for that next year. And then affirm these objectives. So it's a real high level view that the general government committee has on this. There's a second committee, which hasn't met since I've been general government director. And I don't really know the last time it met. It's called the investment committee. And that's the treasurer, it's Vince, it's the general government director, and it's the county board chair. Um, the way this policy is being written now, and you have the option to change this, that committee would meet quarterly and do some of the work that we've been doing in this committee when I show you what the investments are and the maturity rates, or sorry, the rates and the maturities. So that actually should be the work of the investment committee. And then we make as a committee recommendations to our advisor in terms of, we take their recommendations and we make some decisions about when to sell and they execute for us or buy. So that's essentially the three roles, general government, investment committee and our consultancy. Um, I think PMA will have this back for us for the July meeting. 
And I think it would be great if we could get a meeting of the investment committee either before the general government committee or right after it next July. So I just wanted to put that in front of you. So Chairman Luke, we would need uh, your approval for that and we need for you to be there, Vince as well and Amanda. So any questions about that? Okay. I'm gonna sit down briefly. <laughs> All right, who's going to lead us in the discussion on the objectives? Well, <clears throat> I'll mention that. And I passed around to you a very simple reminder here, basically, of what this committee will have responsibility for reviewing in terms of uh, our priorities that the board set. And that was broadband. If you recall, broadband's been a priority now for three years but we're at this point where we're making some progress and now we can push this thing through and I think have some major, major impact. So <clears throat> the purpose of today is to just lay it out in front of you again. I'll give you an update of kind of what we've been doing and looking at, but you have another opportunity here over the next month or so to provide me or anyone uh, suggestions or ideas or concerns about broadband and how we're moving forward. Uh, and then in the July meeting, Bob, who is here also can answer any questions, uh, will be presenting to the board once again, kind of the total package, finalizing what it is our specific objectives are <clears throat> so that we can really focus in and, and get to work, especially on the newer ones. Um, I'll give you just an update. We've been meeting weekly or every two weeks, uh, a small group of us. Uh, to work on broadband and kind of what the next steps are. We had recently, as you recall, a uh, kind of a stakeholder meeting with people from the state, one from the feds, and some of the local leaders about broadband and talked about what those obstacles were that we could help address. And from that, a small group has taken on uh, some activities. Um, Mr. Luke, had asked us to uh, engage with the Towns Association. So he and Mr. Olson called a meeting uh, and, and I and maybe some others will be going to a town, County Towns Association meeting to get their support and buy-in on the importance of broadband and to provide them with information that will help them address questions that will come up from their constituents. Because once they see that line going in front of their house or when they start hearing about the value of broadband, um, they're going to start calling people and many times it may be their town representative as to what they can do to get internet or why can't they get it and that type of thing. Um, <clears throat> we also in the early stages of developing a pilot program for our veterans. Uh, there's a, a population of our veterans who may not have access to high speed internet, may not even know how to use the internet. And yet they are candidates not only to help them, whether it be getting a job or economic support, but certainly telemedicine. Uh, instead of driving down to uh, the VA and, and worrying about getting a ride, they can many times do things via telemedicine on the internet. So we're working with Andy Butzler, uh, trying to put together a, a pilot. We're also thinking about doing this with our schools. And I'll be reaching out to a few of the superintendents about a possible uh, pilot with them to help students who don't have access to it uh, to possibly get it. Um, <clears throat> one of our big things moving forward will be communication. Uh, in particular, we can enhance information on our website. We also will be putting together what you might call an informational sheet or brochure for anyone who needs it because some people do not get on the internet yet. Uh, but it'll be something available to help them understand uh, the value of, of broadband, how they can get hooked up, who they should reach out to to get hooked up. And then finally, we're investigating incentives or programs to get uh, the infrastructure uh, available for uh, people to have it to their house, the long driveways, um, <clears throat> the um, routers, things inside the house that will help them getting. We think there may be ways where we could provide some type of incentive uh, with folks 
to uh, who want it, but maybe can't afford it to say, I can't run it from there to my house. Or once it gets here, it costs me three, $400 for a router, that type of thing. Uh, we're looking at ways that we might incent for people who would be eligible for it to get that. So we'll be doing that as well. Finally, I will say this, um, the last round of grants, which was not a big round of grants, it wasn't a lot of money relative to what they've done in the past. There were two grants in Polk County Award. So uh, one is around the Deer Lake area, St. Croix, Balsam Lake Township area. Uh, and then the other is out in the, uh, out toward Turtle Lake area. Is it Johnstown or Beaver? Beaver. Right. So that was two out of how many? 30. 30 grants awarded or something. So which, which companies were awarded those grants? Lakeland and Northwest, which is Amory. Yeah. Amory. yeah. Um, so again, I think the fact hats off to, to those organizations, you know, they're the ones in, investing and making the risk and the work. Uh, but the fact that the county uh, supports it and has a resolution to uh, kind of be a copay in, in certain ways. I think Amory or Northwest Communication is interested in participating in that grant that we have available to match uh, some of their funds. So, so uh, and, and Bob can probably explain this better than me, but for now, if you all have ideas or concerns, uh, I just gave you an overview of kind of where we're going. Nothing will happen until we get your approval but we'll, reporting, we'll be reporting to you periodically on the different types of activities that we're gonna do. Questions? Bob, did I, you wanna add? Thank you. All right, that'll bring us to a resolution 2823. Um, Housing Partnership Program. Do we want more discussion on it? Anybody? I just have a question. Uh, so, if you want a motion first? Oh, sorry. I'll make a motion. We approve resolution 28 20 23. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, if, if and when it gets implemented, and let's say we find a hang up or a municipality points out a certain thing, like, are we able to bring it back then and, and adjust on sure. the fly? Yeah, I think so. And especially if it's just an adjust the, maybe the uh, procedures, you know, how you apply for their grant or what we're going to be looking for. <clears throat> um, we can change that with a resolution. If it deals with money, like, like in your case, if it's so wildly popular and having an impact, we need more money, let's say, uh, that quickly, then that would take a two thirds vote for right. budget resolution. I mean, but I'm sure it's going to take an education piece, like, because still, there's a lot of people who aren't going to understand exactly what's going on or how they can use it or things like that. I think you're right. I think, I think first, it, it, what I like about it is it's going to send a message to all the communities that, hey, how can we help? Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility, village or city, but we want to help. And uh, because they have the resources and the mechanisms to do it with the TID districts and they've got the communities and so on. It would be helpful for once it is drafted and because it will be, it will probably have changes over time. Oh, yeah. it's, but I would think it would be helpful to have supervisors going out to each of the towns and villages in their district and present it and explain it to them how it's going to work. Because so many times we have things that if you go and ask somebody on the town board, they don't know anything about it because nobody ever talked to them about it and they don't read the paper or whatever. And I, you know, you think about it, it, it it's, my impression is, is you're not gonna have 11 villages and cities coming to us saying we want our 70,000 or whatever right now, because they're gonna, it's gonna be a team approach. They're gonna have to have a developer in communication with them to say this is what may make sense or here's what we want to happen <clears throat> and it's going to take time but this may be that early carrot to get a developer to say this is just enough to push me push me over the edge i'm willing to investigate this further start spending some money knowing that 
they may get that back, right? That's the whole purpose. Another thing that it may do is to show the interest of the county, for one thing, to these municipalities throughout the, uh, the jurisdiction. But the other thing is townships, for an example, might have an interest in something like that. However, they haven't budgeted any money for for anything like this at all, because it's not been on their mind. So this would offset their, their need to uh, draw some huge conclusions on increasing their budget to even to pursue this in any manner. This money would be available for them to, uh, to spark their interest and get started on it and help them so they don't have to answer to their budget or take away from something else that they may have budgeted for. And just, I'm trying to anticipate the municipalities who, you know, in a perfect world, everybody's gonna be ready to jump in with whatever great idea that they have. But for some of them who might be a little bit slower on you know, adopting something like this, like, do we have anybody that we can point to to say like, this municipality is interested in and this is why, because like, I, again, I went to, I'll use Milton as the example. I went to them and they're like, yeah, you know, that sounds good. And I said, well, what, you know, I tried to spur the conversation. I'm like, what do you guys think would be something that the, uh, you know, you could use the program for? And they kind of just said, well, we're not sure. So, I mean, just to spark some inspiration or anything with them. That's the purpose of it. Yeah. All right, and that's that's a different discussion. That's not for the the vote for this. So I'll bring it up. I think it's the purpose of the uh, two hundred thousand dollars is a significant, a significant amount of money that, oh, that they realize that uh, is the plan we still the seventy thousand limit. Well, yeah, that we're, we're look we'll look at that. That'll be part of our final details, and that would be something you all would vote on. And this might just be something that's goofy in my brain. Uh, I was thinking like, because then you can only have two, say you had two people jump right away on the full amount and a third would not be able to do that. They'd get a partial amount. And I don't know if that's just psychological or what it is, but if, I don't know if we'd want to consider making it so three municipalities could get the full amount or. Sure. And we don't, yeah, we don't know what the amount each group would apply for or what right. we would grant them, but yeah. you make a good point. So we'll, we'll have to think about what's the, recommended amount of money to yeah. whom and so on. Yeah. All right. Those are all questions we'll wrestle with. Anybody else? Oh, well, it doesn't surprise, surprise me the reaction you got from Milltown because most towns and villages are, a lot of them are focused on roads. That's the only thing they have money, we spend money on is roads and maintaining road maintenance. So it's it's new, it will be new concept for them. So it might be good to, when we have a plan, when we go in there and communicate, um, giving them ideas on how they could move forward thinking about it because they probably don't even know what step one is. Yeah. Completely well, from a municipality standpoint, roads have been their their main yeah. the misconception that it's their main yeah. and only yeah. uh, objective to to uh, uh, to address in their budget yeah. because it's the main thing that people in the townships know. They weren't they aren't geared for other uh, yeah. you know industrial improvement and things like that yet. Yeah. But uh, the townships are moving that direction. I see it on a regular basis. And uh, so this is, this is going to uh, stimulate a little more diversity into their investments other than just roads and bridges yeah. you know, and maintenance. John St. Great Falls tries, but every time they get a commercial investment, the yeah. city annexes. Yeah, I see that. Uh, that's, that's been Why typical. Bother? <laughs> Yeah. Then the village of Centuria president thinks the town of St. Croix Falls and the village of Centuria should merge because they can't annex, the city can't annex from a village, but they can annex from That's the right. town. He's got a plan. He's going to incorporate, I threatened Amory about that. He's yeah. going to annex them in. Yeah, really. All right. If there's nothing more on the resolution, we'll 
Call for the vote on all those in favor? Aye. All right, passes. Um, what's our outside agency's initial information? Russ. Well, <clears throat> this is sort of the first real foray into budget season. I know you're excited about that. Um, <laughs> so one of the first moves we make is we ask those that we have supported in the past or considered in the past to let us know what they're thinking they would like to have from the county for the next budget year. So this is our list as we have it so far. Uh, I am not confident that one of these at least one of these is the full amount that the agency will ask actually ask for, but this is just sort of context setting. So right now we've got requests for about $340,000. Contextually, that's about half a percent of the overall budget for the county. About 8% uh, increase in asks with a pretty significant additional request from tourism. Uh, Mo and I were wondering why the fair was asking for less, and that's one that I will go back to, and not that we want to give away more money, but uh, make sure that they got that right. And then we have uh, an organization. Let me just make sure we know who we're talking about. So Tourism, uh, Terry, Polk County Economic Development Corp, Historical Society, Museum, Fair, Kinship, West Central uh, Wisconsin Regional Planning Corporation, CRA, Westcap. Those are the asks. Uh, you all heard from CRA last year. We decided to keep the amount that we gave out pretty much even. So we suggest they come back to us this year. So that's where we're standing, about 8% 8, 8 more um, than last year. A little bit more than the rate of inflation. And as I said, I'm not absolutely confident that's where we're going to end up. But it gives you a little bit of context. Next slide. So big, big, so that's granular, microscopic size. Let's go way up to 30,000 feet. We have one big piece of information we need, and that's the shared revenue formula from the state. Uh, this past week, I heard, I think it's been confirmed that the governor and the legislature came together and have some sort of deal for this, but we don't know what it is. We don't know how much Polk County is gonna get. And importantly, we, we, importantly, we don't know if there's a split. So one of the initial sort of trial balloons we saw on this had about 45% going to public safety and the rest going to the general pot. I'm not sure that's still the case. So the split will be pretty important. Um, we've seen everything from discussions of four and a half million down to one and a half million. I'm not sure we're gonna see the one and a half million. Um, so as soon as we get this information, it could be as early as today on our WCA call, or at least something provisional, we'll be able to put that last uh, big piece into the budget model and start to understand where we stand, which will allow you to make determinations about how much we give to folks that aren't us. Um, starting next month, we'll have some presentations from these external agencies, outside agencies, and then we'll also have some in August. So you'll have a chance uh, to interview these folks, uh, listen to their pitch, and make some determinations about what you want to do for them, if anything. Any questions about that? All right, that brings us to a discussion of how your PPA is contract. Something we need a full session for, or where are we at with that? No, um, the union has not yet sent us the letter to reopen. Um, so this will probably be an ongoing topic <clears throat> on the agenda until that happens. And then we'll get started. So there's, there's nothing to do today. All right. Well, we can review our committee work plan. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Anything we need to update on our work plan? Mr. Chair, if I could, uh, I think we'll want to put outside agencies' uh, presentations on July and August. 
This is the one we did. Oh. Have them come and speak to right. us. Right. What was the, we're supposed to do a review of the HR policy? That's been pushed downstream a little bit more, sir. All right, how about subject matters for our next meeting? I have a couple of things. I have a question on if this is something that should be considered in these meetings. One is the Antler Lake Lake Association has reached out to me directly, um, passed along some communications about a property that they've been concerned about uh, for a while that's operating it's a residential property, but it's basically in violation. They, they're saying it's in violation acting as a junkyard. And they passed along communications from me um, from, is it Jason? Yeah. Yeah, saying, and they were unhappy with the response saying that we'll get to this when we have time. And so they came back to me saying like, you know, why is this person getting the first um, step in communications, a, a warning letter, basically multiple times over and nothing's happening beyond that. So I just, I don't know how to proceed myself. So I wanted to see what I can do to, you know, let them know that I'm bringing it up and talk to Jason. Give Jason a call. My office works with zoning on some of the more egregious. We've been meeting, I think every other week about uh, we just filed a summons and complaint on the Deer Lake monstrosity. Mm -hmm. um, and so the next one on our list is a junkyard as far as, I don't know if it's that one. Mm -hmm. I don't know which property that is, but we're working through those to, you know, yeah. file one about every other week. That, that's based on the, you know, they have a, a method they follow mm -hmm. on, on, priorities, the prior prioritization process. And it sounds to me that's what Jason's doing is following so is, that is process. Is this something we want to get on our agenda or should we even be discussing it, this? It's, it's been on the environmental services agenda because they are the committee that oversees zoning. Um, I don't see how it would reflect on general. That's who I would refer it to. It, it, believe me, they take time. Yeah. No question, I've experienced it. On more than one occasion. But to, to be completely transparent, I think it's not so much the time in zoning be, because they are complaint driven. And when they get a complaint, it, it goes on their list. But it's my office and our ability to file, which is why we started this to slowly do them and get one done. And then the next most important. So we're, we're working from the most egregious cases down. That's what so we, I would talk with yeah. Bob and, and or me, and, yeah. and that's the way you can get okay. a vibe so. where we are. Sounds good. And then uh, the other one was this is just a consistency thing that I had noticed, and it was partly because I was looking at environmental services about possibly having to uh, pop in and, and make a, a comment like that. Um, and I was just curious why, if we need to revisit for consistency's sake, you know, on our agenda here, number five is just receipt of information from supervisors not seated as committee members, where the Environmental Services Committee has stipulations added to that, um, saying like only things on the agenda can be discussed. So that would have kept me from, my understanding was that would have kept me from bringing anything up that wasn't already on the agenda. So I was wondering why we're not consistent across all committees with that. I don't. And I, I maybe that's probably something that the chairman of that committee wanted to add it on there simply because, yeah. you know, keeping things in order those means so long. I would say probably the best thing to do would be to talk to the chairman of that committee okay. and say, Can I come and do this? Okay. Then he can put it on the agenda. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so do we have any subject matters for our next meeting that anybody wants on there? Yes, if you do, before our next meeting, get a hold of Vince or somebody and try to get them on. 
Anything else? Any other motion we adjourn? Second. All right. Yeah,